So what is healing? That's what I want to talk about for the next few videos. Thanks for tuning in. Healing is really, in my estimation, as an naturopathic doctor, having, having explored this idea uh, in practice for the last 10 years, and then prior to that, in school, healing is this poorly understood idea, concept, that I think we would do well to tune into what we think we understand about it might seem basic, but if we don't know where we're trying to go, how can we ever really get there? So what are the components of healing? That's going to be the series. Thanks for tuning in. The most important or first step to healing is to first recognize that something is wrong. Now, you might be thinking that's a no-brainer, right? Jen, thanks for telling us that you have to recognize something is wrong, but it's it's not actually that obvious. One, because in all fairness, most of the time we do have this innate healing force at work. The concept in physiology is homeostasis homeodynamics, let's say, where you oscillate around a set point and this swinging to one level, the body swings it back to another. It's not just body though, it's being. In traditional Chinese medicine, it's referred to as qi. The qi is this healing force. In homeopathy, it's referred to as the vital force. These are all similar concepts in terms of the writing of the imbalance that happens. So the question is, when we have illness, when we have a disease progression, what's going on? It's my understanding and that of my predecessors that What's happening is that the healing force itself is untuned. The healing force is not doing what it's meant to do. And so it's off balance. Thus, my point in saying the recognition that something is wrong has to happen in any disease, pro in any healing process for that to begin we have to first recognize that something is off balance, that something is not proceeding the way it should. An example in cancer would be just the detection that there's cancer, that cancer's happening. We have all sorts of mechanisms in the body that are meant to actually detect and find cancer on a regular basis. Your white blood cells, are constantly swimming around in the blood vessels and other areas, not just the blood vessels and the spleen and in, in all sorts of places in the tissue, hanging out looking for bad cells, looking for rogue cells, looking for things that don't quite look right. So that's why I mentioned detection and recognition, awareness that something is off as part of the healing process. Case in point, uh, in my own family, in the past year, I want to say, I had two different aunts come down with pancreatic cancer in the span of about two months of one another, in a very short amount of time. In one of my aunts, um, they discovered the cancer exceedingly late, and it was advanced to the point that I think she was stage four or five. She died in less than a week. They found it and she was dead. It was literally that fast. My other aunt, um, they managed to find the cancer at an earlier stage. I wanna say stage one or two, I don't recall exactly. And she's still alive. She's doing well. She's seeing one of the best damn doctors in the world, mind you. <laughs> and it was also caught 
early, which, which helps. Um, and that's an important part of, of healing in general is the detection that something is wrong, but it's not limited merely to the physical level. We see the same thing on the mental, emotional, psychological, spiritual level. Um, let's say you have trauma. If you have a diagnosis like DID, dissociative identity disorder, where there's a splitting of the personality, what happens a lot of times, it's like 50-50, I think. 50% of the time, the original person, persona, is not aware that there are other parts of themselves that kind of take over and they have this experience of blackouts. Well, the first step is recognition that this is happening. For somebody to reintegrate their personality, that can't proceed unless there's a recognition that the personality is disintegrated to some extent. If you're in a toxic relationship with, with someone, and you have PTSD from said scenario, you have to first become aware, well, possibly you become aware that you have PTSD and that guides you back to figuring out that you're in a relationship with a toxic person. But at some point, you ha in order to get out of that scenario, you have to first recognize that that is what's happening. Most people, 90% of people or more, are not going to leave a relationship that is okay, that's fine. Some won't even leave once they know it's toxic, but the first step really is a recognition that something is wrong, that this is not normal. Same thing with gaslighting right the tactic of many of these of of many toxic personalities um, is to mislead you essentially once you become aware that gaslighting is happening or even what gaslighting is it starts to not be quite an efficient tactic for said person because you are going well this person might be lying to me now maybe this is not true but you can't get to that point without awareness that is my point. That is the most import, important beginning step, I would say, in terms of proceeding down the healing pathway. We cannot proceed. We will, we will not find the path or start the path unless we recognize that we need to look for the path because we have something off. So thanks for tuning in. That's all I got for today. I'm trying to keep these short. I realize eight minutes in that, that that's not that so short, but it's an attempt. Adio.